Hi everyone, I've had a lot of requests from voiceovers with my videos, so as I've just reached a thousand subscribers, massive, massive thank you by the way, I thought that would be a nice milestone to recognise and sort of celebrate. So this is my first voiceover, so please be kind. <laughs> um, Anyway, so I thought Oliver here would be a good one to start on. Here's a brindle staffy, so there is a lot of nice colours, some, a lot of layers, and the way the lighting is in the reference photo, there is a good contrast between lights and darks, so I thought this would be a really good one to start with. So this is an A4, which is about 8 by 12 and this is obviously a full body portrait where he's curled up on his blanket so I wouldn't want to go any smaller than that because you'll obviously start to struggle to fit in any kind of detail so I would normally to apply these base layers try and use my soft pastel sticks where possible but to make sure that I didn't lose where these brindle stripes need to be I did everything with pastel pencils for this so you can see here I am just making sure that I'm putting in where the stripes are and then working around that just to make sure that I don't lose where these stripes are on him. It's obviously really important to get details like this and markings in the right place because when you are doing pet portraits, obviously it's things like this that have to be right. It has to look like the dog or the animal that you're drawing. And these markings, that is what make that dog unique so it's really important to add to make sure that these details are in the right place so here this is where the the warmer shades are and the brightest part of the portrait is where he's curled over and the light is across his back and the top of his head so there is a lot of warm tones here so i'm using some really nice warm beiges some browns some warm oranges and some reds the the white highlights they are lighter oranges there looks like some almost warm cream to white as well so you'll see me use many different colors for this i don't even want to know how many po many pencils i had out on my on my desk so i usually start off with um trying to get a mid-tone down there are areas where like here now i'm, I'm putting in some darks because this area here is where it's in shadow is really dark so I am just making sure that I'm applying these layers accurately and you can see from all of my previous videos even when I've, I haven't got any voiceovers on that I work in quite small areas I don't like working all over the place on one portrait I feel that if I can get an area up to about 80% complete before I move on to the next that I'm far more far more focused on the portrait i like to make sure that i can see it come into life before i move on to the next part so here you can see i'm starting to add that the highlights on top of my mid-tones and here i'm adding some oranges some different warm yellows some warm browns there are so many colors captured from where the light is bouncing off here it's really important to to not make your artwork flat to capture all those different colors so pay really close attention to your reference photo. Even when you're putting these base layers down, try and make sure that you follow the, the direction of the fur because that will help you when you go to put your finer details on to make sure that you follow the skeletal structure of the dog, all the little wrinkles on Oliver's forehead here, the creases, all of those things. You just pay really close attention to your reference photo. That The reference photo is telling you where you need to direct your pencil strokes little details like that on the ear is also what makes it more realistic the these very subtle lighter fur marks over that dark dark shadow on the inside of his ear so in this reference photo oliver actually had his eyes partly open and the his owners wanted it to look like he was completely asleep so I actually um, used a bit of artistic license for this and we I managed to draw it as he was completely asleep. So here just capturing where the, the subtle tones are there because obviously like I say this area was in shadow so you don't want anything too bright here. It's just enough detail to, to show that that's his little nose that's just behind that part of the blanket. 
this part of the body here, this is where you can really see the, the contrast between lights and darks. The shine on this part of his coat was beautiful. So you'll see here just how many different colours I'm using. There's many oranges, browns, different different shades completely. And it's really, I, the amount of pencils I use, as I say, there were loads that I had out. So here, as I say, you can see I'm, wa I'm working in really small areas, really focusing on making sure that I get these brindle stripes accurate. Starting off with some darker colours and then putting the mid-tone in around it. Putting in where the, the warmer shades are. Follow my reference photo really, really closely. You also want to make sure where he's curled up here, the skin is obviously wrinkled in a way where he's got his leg close up to his stomach. So you want to make sure that you put your pencil and your layers down following that direction of where the fur is going to then almost sort of like ripple. You want to make sure that you capture that. So here again, just applying the base the, the, the base layers of the mid-tones you want to draw what you would naturally see as further away so closest to the skin first they're the colours that you ideally want to be putting down and then you want to be working on the fur layers closer to you building up to that gradually so the very last thing that you would put on a portrait is things like whiskers and that sort of thing because they would be on the very top they would overlap everything else So Oliver was asleep on a blanket here, which you'll see me work on towards the end of the video. And here you can see, if I notice on an area, like where I'm just applying this, this really dark area, I needed to make some subtle adjustments to his muzzle area. It's things like that, just paying close attention to it. That bit needs to be slightly lighter now that I've got the darker area next to it. Which is why I always say I like to get it 80% complete before I move on to the next bit, because it's never... It's never fully finished until you look at the portrait as a whole and you step back and you think, right, is there anything else I need to do to it now that all of Oliver is completed? So you can see here where I applied that really dark colour as the base, I'm now overlapping colours on top of it. This will make everything appear that much more realistic because you want to be, as I said before, drawing stuff that is closest to you last and that is usually where you're working from dark to light and that's the good thing about pastels you can do that pastel matte paper takes a load of layers I've never actually got to the point where I can't layer any more on top so like here now this is pure black you wouldn't leave it pure black because it would be flat but you'll see I'll go over it with different colors and I'm putting these individual fur strokes over the top of it to make it that more much more realistic and you'll see here it looks like I'm using black again there but I'm actually using a dark brown and I don't know whether or not the the camera is picking that up but it, it's creating what looks like a lighter black I guess on top of the the a very black base layer that I put down so some dark reds because you when you've got dark to light there's always a, a transition color in between so like a mid-tone which for this would be a, a dark red or a dark brown and then you put your highlights right in the middle to create that ripple effect of the fur I will do some closer studies as well and do some some time lapse um, be slower than this with some voiceovers if you need if, if any videos are of interest like that where you'd like me to break something down I'm more than happy to do that so here I'm using some oranges, some yellows. There's a Derwent pastel pencil, one of the yellow light light tan colours that was perfect for this. This was so much fun to capture the the colour and the reflection and the patterns of his fur. It was I got really engrossed in this. I've got two staffies myself, so um, this was this was a nice portrait to work on. So you can see I'm going back to and fro different areas working on what I think needs to be tweaked that's my white now that's my very brightest highlight capturing that shine right in the middle there so for the blanket I 
have broken this down again as I have with all my portraits into small sections so I've got my main shape in the middle and I'm working around that here I'm putting in another shape and then I will fill in the areas around it get that bit 80% complete before I move on to the next I tend to have I don't know, 15 pencils 15 20 pencils in my hand at one time and then they, I tend to know which order I'm putting the pencils down for something like this blanket where it is all a similar set of colours, unlike Oliver's himself who was many, many colours. So here I'm putting in the white shapes first and that is just so that I don't lose my way. This blanket is quite com complex, so there's a lot of shapes, there's a lot of different colours where it's very creased and wrinkled up. So putting in where your basic shapes are first will really help you not to, to lose your lose your way on it. And then once I've applied this darker mid-tone in between, you can see what I'm doing here, I will then use my <laughs> the sort of blues and greys on top to create that texture, that fluffy type of the blanket that was a purple as well, so that it's not flat, you want to use different colours if you can. capturing the texture it wasn't a smooth fabric but it was a slightly textured soft fleecy type fabric I guess so you want to make sure you replicate that texture it would be really easy now that you've got to the blanket stage and you've finished Oliver to think oh I'll just rush this bit but it would it wouldn't it wouldn't be right it wouldn't the whole portrait would be not ruined but it would just not have the same effect so make sure you spend that same amount of time getting the blanket as realistic as you can putting in the highlights the darker areas to show where it curves where the creases are it will make the whole portrait come together and it will be really really worthwhile thank you for watching i hope this first video with the voiceover was okay i mentioned in the video that i am happy to make some focus videos so Maybe um, if you want a focus video on drawing a nose, curly fur, a spaniel's ear, or maybe something completely different like drawing grass, um, I'm more than happy to do that. So um, if you want to pop any comments, any suggestions below, that's absolutely fine. If you did like the video, I'd really appreciate any likes, um, any shares, just so more people can see it and then I can make more content like this. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you'd like to get notified of any new content. Thank you for watching. Bye!